Oh, thanks and welcome back. Thanks very much, Lena, for those beauty tips, um, the hygienic tips, whatever. Well, Cameroon is, uh, Cameroon, like other African countries, is going through a social political crisis. In fact, what comes out from the mouth is, it can be very damaging. And what is spilled on papers by the journalists is equally uh, going to reshape the society or made ma or do good for the society. And so we have been preaching peace all the time. And this time around, we have uh, two peace crusaders. Uh, one is Professor Stephen Younglord, who is the director of uh, the Center for Peace Journalism. And of course, we have Voivoda, Voivoda Alex, who is uh, the, uh, the, of the Com Cameroon Community uh, Media Network. They are all out here so that we talk about peace and peace journalism. Thanks very much and welcome. Professor, good morning to you. Good morning. Oh, thanks for welcoming. Thanks for accepting our invitation. It's my pleasure. All right. And uh, uh, Alex uh, Vivoda, welcome, Alex. Thank you very much. Alex is of the Cameroon Community Net Media Network. Um, generally, we, we, we begin with a sample question where on our talking points, Prof. Um, the internet has been doing a lot of things. And sometimes we ask ourselves the question whether it is doing good or it's doing bad for the community or for the world that in, in which we live. Your take. Well, um, I, a, actually, I agree uh, with what uh, the young lady said a few minutes ago, that it's certainly uh, some of both. It has the potential uh, to disseminate peaceful messages, okay. to, to bring people together. But on the other hand, of course, it also has the potential to disseminate hate speech, uh, to disseminate uh, misinformation. So it's some of both. And we always want to... Uh, think that, um, uh, like uh, uh, Mark Twain would tell you, bad news moves faster than good news. Um, well, uh, I'll, I'll let your own take. Um, I have to say, when I arrived in Cameroon, there was not even mobile internet. <laughs> so Alex, Alex. You, have to, you have to imagine that within a really short period of time in Cameroon, it just involved from the people starting to get smartphones, and now we are like on 4G connection, and we have like streaming movies, getting connected, and I would agree with Stephen and also with, with the uh, artist before here. It really has to do with something, how, what you make out of it. And I think that this development so fast impacted also Cameroon, brought a lot of positive aspect, but we also have to look at uh, possible negative And this brings us to the question, peace journalism, because um, it equally has to do with the um, um, in, uh, electronic superhighways. Now, Prof, uh, you are the director of the Center for Peace Journalism. Um, what is in your sleeves? What do you have to tell those who write about peace crusading? Well, uh, maybe I'll start with this, uh, a definition of peace journalism, and which is it's um, when reporters and editors make choices that can create an atmosphere that's conducive to peace. So what kind of choices are we talking about? We're talking about the words that we use, the language that we use. Are we using words that are inflammatory, that further divide people, or instead are we using more conciliatory language? How are we framing our stories? So are we telling the story in such a way that it takes a bad situation and makes it even worse? So the analogy I always use is pouring gasoline on the fire. What we are not, as peace journalists, are open advocates for peace. So we're not saying there must be peace. But what we are doing is leading a, a societal discussion about peace and about the values of the peace uh, while giving a voice to the voiceless in our societies. So in a really quick elevator pitch style, that is peace journalism. And sometimes, like you said, uh, some journalists will, will pour fuel in in a very delicate situation to, you know, inflame it. Uh, but then there are situations where um, the journalist cannot keep quiet, despite the odds. He has to tell the story as it is. Absolutely. So how, do, how will he go about that? So, so one of the, I think, misunderstandings about peace journalism is that somehow if something terrible happens that we don't report about it. So if there's an incident where um, there is a protest and some people are killed, for example, of course we must report about that. Of course that's news. So the question isn't, do we report the news? The question is, how do we report the news? Do we say that 10 people were killed, 
uh, in, um, in a civil unrest, or do we say 10 people were slaughtered in a bloody massacre? So it matters how we tell our stories and the language that we use. Oh, come on. And it pushes me to ask the question, the involvement of uh, community um, radios um, in, in, in the reporting of uh, uh, um, in propagating peace. Uh, um, Alex, I come, I come back to you. Mm -hmm. uh, how involved are community <coughs> radios? We know they are like a relief, you know, from the big, you know, media house. Let me take the case of Cameroon that you certainly know better. Uh, uh, CRT, for example, that is community radios relief because, you know, they might not get to all the interland. Uh, how, how are you involved? Uh, mm -hmm. I'm, I mean, that's exactly what, what uh, I think is the biggest point, that we somehow underestimate what actually community media contributing uh, on the social, social political, social economic level and development of certain um, communities we have, especially the rural communities. What they're contributing to social cohesion, what they're contributing to community development and, um, and other aspects we are talking about. We always see the big mainstream uh, uh, media houses who are quite popular, who have the visibility but we are not talking about the hundreds and hundreds of community media who are there in the villages, in the rural area, providing people with information, for example, via relaying CRTV news, but also providing their own content about the local social, cultural, and economic issues. And especially, they're also doing this in the local languages. So if we talk about what are community media contributing it's really, really a lot, but it's running a little bit under the radar. And the, the thing is that peace journalism is for us a tool to help those people not to feel alone in certain di uh, difficult situations. Because if you're in a rural uh, setting there, or maybe a, really a small radio which is just run by one, two people which are really motivated people, it brings you into certain difficult situations, especially when you're facing conflict and crisis situation, how to react to certain, uh, towards certain conflicts, how to involve different people. And the Cameroon Community Media Network is a platform to exchange, to discuss, and to help each other in different situations. And for us, that Professor Stephen Youngblood is now here the second time, really helps people to develop their skills, to professionalize in the way how they are working, and to collaborate. And I think especially under this current time, Collaboration is the biggest force. Before I move to Professor, uh, let me just stay with you, um, yeah. Alex. Uh, what communities, uh, community radios, the main focus on health because they need to know their health on health issues, agriculture, you know, mm -hmm. um, community development, but not politics, you know, mainstream politics. And you know, um, I mean, <laughs> isn't isn't any community issue a political issue? If we talk about community, about youth unemployment, mm -hmm. isn't this political? If we talk about health issues, HIV, AIDS, yes. isn't this somehow political? Okay. So I think it's, we need to distinguish between party politics, party politics and uh, what is community uh, uh, topics on this. And I think if we want to have uh, developed within our society and within our community, everything will, everything will it's somehow everything is political. Okay, now, <laughs> thanks very much. Because I, I know politicians take uh, community radio stations hostage. <laughs> and prof, prof, you will not prove me wrong. <laughs> wrong. On that. Now, um, let us move on, on peace journalism. Now, um, we understand that you'll be coming up, will be probably in, the short, probably in the short spell, we'll have some training for, for journalists. But how do you look at, if at all, you've probably gone through what um, Cameroonian journalists have been reporting on the present crisis in the country? Well, um, so I, uh, let me say this. Um, between last year and this year, I've spent a total of maybe three weeks in Cameroon. Okay. So um, while your question is an excellent one, I'm really not qualified to answer. I don't consider myself <laughs> an expert at all on Cameroonian mm -hmm. media. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, so I, I'm sorry that I can't really give you a good reading, answer reading, to your question. You've been reading some papers and, um, of course. and how they are reporting on, on the crisis. I understand, yes. Um, sometimes you say, oh, come on. Um, Maybe uh, professionally, he goofed the editorial lines. You know, I would never. I, I've been to 25 or 30 countries teaching peace journalism, right. and and one of the things that I learned very quickly is to not pass any kind of judgment on 
journalists around the world because every country is different, every situation is different. I just spent five months in Ethiopia um, on a comprehensive semester-long project. And even after that long in Ethiopia, um, I wouldn't, I, I'm not even close to the point where I can say I'm an expert on Ethiopian media. So I think that the evaluation of Cameroonian media is best left to the Cameroonian media professionals. After you've, um, you've, you've gone through the world, there is, there is this issue of running for scoop, you know, uh, for, will probably uh, accept with me, uh, that is killing the journalism profession, whether in Europe, in the Americas, or in the Asia, uh, we know this, the issue of scoop uh, is sometimes um, contested because people want to be the first to run the story. Well, and, and there's uh, nothing uh, wrong, and w what I tell my students is that uh, I think that competition in the news business is healthy. But what it's become, at least with some media outlets in the U.S., is I think we've forgotten that it's more important to get it right than to get it first. And, and I think that getting it right, being accurate, not spreading disinformation, and especially in a conflict, in, a, in a, a place where there's violent conflict, spreading misinformation, spreading rumors can have deadly effects. So I, you know, if, there, if there's a message I give my American colleagues, it's to get it right first, and then worry about scooping your opponents, and scooping the other media. <laughs> Covered. Alex, you know, community is, 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 is difficult to manage, you know, the psyche, yeah. the mentality, the, the way they approach things. You know, once the community radio uh, dishes out information, especially in local languages, um, probably these people take it for a truth and it becomes difficult for an upside for them to accept. How challenging is that? I think it's, it's exactly how you say it. <laughs> but that's also where peace journalism is offering. Uh, some tools where you do and also what we are doing is to professionalize uh, the community media journalists which means on a technical level but also from uh, the perspective of basic journalistic standards. It means a, a lot of uh, what Professor is talking about on peace journalism it's actually what we all learned in, in, on journalism school. It's about good journalism, being responsible in your reporting like Professor said, getting it right instead first and not going for what bleeds leads, uh, etc. So I think if we build, and that's what we are also doing within the network, is to build basic journalistic standards and to build skills and capacities for those who don't have the access to it. Those people who are maybe in the rural or in the community media, uh, working in the community media environment, maybe don't even, ever, even have access to training on this scale so that they can even do it right. So we just want to protect them from themselves by offering training and working with them to develop a, a concept for their own radio, how they want to do journalism. There are different styles of journalism and different settings like rural areas need different approaches. We need this multilingualism, we need the local languages there and we need these local people there to talk to the people because those in the, in the community, they tell me it's not like they're going to the radio station, they're doing the programs and going home. They're like the target of everyday questioning. They're going to the radio, already five people approach them. You know, I have this problem, I have these issues. Can you not <coughs> help us to do this and that? When they're leaving the radio, the same thing. People recognize them as an important part uh, of the community, which are also having capacities to mediate within conflicts and issues. So. I think we, we shouldn't underestimate what community media can do. The problem is just if we leave them alone with their problems, with their issues. And I think a platform like the CCMN can help and facilitate to gather, to discuss and assess these kind of problems and help them to overcome them in a certain way. Uh, and Prof, uh, we, we will be right wrapping up. Um, um, sometimes, have you, have, you, have, are you, have you ever come across a situation where uh, sometimes your students or sometimes you listen to uh, pe people who make testimonies of listening to an information from a certain radio and then they say, okay, no, until I get it from this. I mean, the rush for scoop, I still repeat on that. You get a scoop, but I want to get it right. I, I want to get it from this other source or this other radio. 
Well, I, I mean, I think what, what you're talking about is basic media literacy. And uh, I, I think that media literacy is an important issue around the world. Certainly in the United States, that if I, one of the things I would say is if, if news consumers were more media literate, then the Russian disinformation before the last uh, presidential election might not, been, have, might not have been as effective as it was. So I think that there's a need for media literacy everywhere. Um, and a, a healthy dose of skepticism, frankly, that, okay, I heard this information from this source, but let me check on some, some other sources. Let me check online. Let me check with another radio station. Let me listen to what my community media partners are saying. Um, because I, I think that, that, a, that a, a well-rounded media consumer consumes media from many sources. Oh, thanks very much, um, Professor. Uh, and so you'll be coming up with a training. Uh, what would that be focusing on? We know it's peace journalism, but then the basics, or be, maybe we do not even know. So we'll, we'll talk about uh, some of the fundamentals of peace journalism. Um, we'll certainly talk with the media professionals about how they assess media in Cameroon and which of these peace journalism principles might be best applied in Cameroon, and particularly which of these p principles might be most applicable in a community media setting. And we know that sometimes these journalists don't, don't, want, to, um, they don't want to apply what they learn sometimes uh, because of pressure. Well, uh, that's a, actually an excellent question for Alexander. Uh, so <laughs> Alex, did the, how did, uh, I, I was here a year ago doing some trainings. Yeah. So we can ask Alex, how, how did, did the, journalists apply these? This, 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 this lesson started to learn on peace journalism, peace proceedings. Um, um, have you been having positive feedback yes. from what you listen? I mean, uh, we, we are not here to, to impose Anyways. anything on anybody, so we are, um, how to say, uh, alliance of willings. So we are here. Um, our organization is, is highly locally organized, highly autonomous in, in what they are doing. So we have now uh, 70, over 70 members um, from the southwest, northwest, west, littoral, and central region. And those regional uh, chapters, like you call it here in Cameroon, are uh, highly independent. They know what the issues are on the ground, what are the topics there, how they are taking. Uh, Stephen always says he's offering a buffet with different tools, different <laughs> things, yeah. and what they can use in their context. We have people from the East region also attending uh, meetings and, and trainings, and they have a completely different approach. Mm -hmm. What can be peace journalism or what can be good journalism, responsible journalism in their con uh, context? And I think we just try to support them to find these tools, to bring them the resources and to uh, empower them. And I mean, we, we are just facilitating here. And I would just also agree with Stephen, although I'm here already now over four years, I still are highly dependent on the feedback and on the opinion and on the assessment of the local Cameroonian journalists, because they know it, what is the issue in their village, what is the issue in Yaounde, in Douala, in Boya, and in Bamenda. I will never have the depth of understanding, the cultural understanding, the social understanding like those people have. And we, we just try to facilitate uh, um, an alliance against war journalism, against this sensational journalism, because we think it's really, really important. And those media organs who are part of the network are not there because uh, they have to be, or it's imposed on them. Most of those approached us uh, on their own after we presented it, for example, during a radio show or during a meeting, and it was not a kind of an, an <laughs> a, a, a top-down approach. I see. And uh, let me just uh, wrap up with Professor uh, Sensationalism. You know, in a in a context where dissolution people are looking for solutions, sen they, they they stick more to sensationalism. Are we okay with that? Well, um, w what peace journalism would say is that there's a better way, that there's a better way to report other than sensationalism. And I know that journalists around the world are taught in journalism schools that we must 
spice up what we do. We must make it sensational. That no one will pay attention. Yeah, if we, did, that no one will pay attention if we don't. Yeah, you but, teach them that. Yeah, but the well, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> and and and, and, and spice yeah. is teaching them that. But, well, but the, attractive. the fact is, there have been academic studies right. that have surveyed audiences, and yeah. audiences, in fact, prefer reporting and journalism that isn't sensational and that is more substantive, that offers a discussion about solutions, for example. You mentioned solutions. Uh, because audiences feel empowered when they read these sorts of peace journalism reports. So one of my messages as I travel around the world is when people, when you hear that only sensational journalism sells, don't believe it because it's not true. <laughs> I, I wanted to stop there, but I'm I'm I, I, I pushed I pushed pushed this question to Alex. Alex, we are, we are caught in the whirlpool of uh, the social media um, and and you know conventional media, and the people buy it. How, how do you get that? Um, of course, they are buying it, but uh, I think that especially if we talk about uh, social media in the context of community and rural broadcasting, the community media can again uh, have, have a function to kind of um, filter this kind of what is true, what is right. I mean, it comes always back to this, what, I'm, what I always try to say is uh, the good journalism, the journalist who is responsible, who takes responsibility for the audience he's going there, who wants to take it right, who doesn't want to be inflammatory, who doesn't want to provoke a certain situation, who doesn't want to put fuel into the fire, like Stephen <laughs> always said. Um, I mean, w we have to think it's, it's a whole bunch of, of different aspects which brings us back to the responsibility of the journalists uh, who are working in the field and always the, uh, to have in mind how it is affecting the audience, how it is affecting the people I'm talking to. Do I provoke feelings against somebody in them or do I want to bring them together or do I want to help them? And I think that's always something we journalists should have in mind. What effect does our reporting have out there? And I mean, I, just from what I, what I see in Cameroon and also from other countries where I was working on community media, uh, community media journalists are closer to the people, to the, to the people and to the community. More. They have a, a faster feedback. It doesn't mean that they always do it right. It's, yeah. it's not that, but the feedback is more immediate than maybe in bigger media houses and bigger media stations, which uh, is maybe even broadcasting nationally. You don't see the effects, what it has in the north, south, west, whatever. But if you're in a two, three, five thousand uh, inhabitants village and you're doing your show and it did something, you know, you just step out of your studio and you will have immediate feedback. Oh, come on. So, come on. so community media is more of a dialogue, mm -hmm. whereas bigger national media is more of a monologue. It's more of a one-way communication, and that's the real advantage, I think, of community media. Oh, thanks very much. Wonderful indeed. And uh, we'll be uh, accompanying you because some of us will be part of this um, training. Uh, I want to thank you graciously for being part of this program, um, Alex, and, of course, Professor Stephen Youngblood, who is the director of the Center for Peace Journalism. Well, thanks very much. I will leave you um, in the company of uh, Roland, what do you say? All right, we have some good music from Cameroon. I know Alex is very used to Makosa, Dikutsi. <laughs> He's already in Cameroon. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks very much. Okay. Um, yeah.